When ATP phosphorylates a nucleophile, the typical product is ADP. But if we want to make more ATP, in essence, storing energy so that we can use ATP to phosphorylate more nucleophiles, we need to somehow go in the reverse direction from ADP and phosphate back to ATP in a molecule of water. And thermodynamically, in order to do this, we need a molecule that's an even stronger phosphoryl donor than ATP itself. In the midst of glycolysis, it's the enol phosphate intermediate phosphoenol pyruvate, or PEP, that does the job. This is an even more reactive source of phosphate than ATP itself. And the reason why is very straightforward, as long as you think about this from the perspective of fundamental organic chemistry. So here's PEP. And PEP is an enol phosphate, and that's important to draw your attention to. It has a structure that looks like an enol, highlighting in, in blue, connected to the phosphate group. Now, intrinsically, if this phosphate group were gone, say a nucleophile came in and kicked a pair of electrons onto this oxygen, that would generate an enolate. And if this enolate were to be protonated, that would establish eventually a CO double bond, a carbonyl compound, here a ketone. The thermodynamic driving force for that seems high, since we'd be going from an enol to a ketone, and we're familiar with the idea that the keto form is much more stable than the enol form, and this molecule, which is going to be pyruvate on the product side, is no exception. PEP has a lot of latent energy as a result of the fact that it's kind of a, a fixed or frozen enol. And the basic idea of the phosphorylation of ATP with PEP is that the terminal anionic nucleophilic oxygen of ADP attacks the electrophilic phosphorus atom in phosphoenol pyruvate. And this results in the formation of a CO double bond and protonation of the alpha carbon of PEP to go directly to the products, which are pyruvate, that's the molecule you see here, and a molecule of ATP. In essence, the reason this happens, the reason it's thermodynamically heavily favored, you can see negative 6.5 kilocalories per mole here, the reason it's heavily thermodynamically favored is that a big part of what we're doing here is simply keto enol tautomerization. We're going from the less stable enol form in the enol phosphate to the much more stable keto form. And that's going to be thermodynamically downhill. And it's downhill enough to power the formation of ATP on the product side from ADP. There are other ways ATP is synthesized, but this is one I like to highlight because it's a purely chemical mechanism. We probably won't be able to talk about this in this course, but another thing to look at is the enzyme ATP synthase, which is fascinating because in essence it uses a physical slamming together of a phosphate and an ADP molecule in order to form ATP. We probably won't look at that in this course as it's a much more physical mechanism, but this is an extremely common and important mechanism for the synthesis of ATP as well, synthesis inside the enzyme ATP synthase.